Cool, so we are back here for episode two of Collections, and today we're gonna to be looking at the collection of Bailey Moore, who is the owner of Vintage Culture. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. t-shirts are these stuff that you wear like a lot on the daily or um, a few of these earth ones yeah I, I, a decent amount of the earth ones I wear but some of these other ones are a little too small for me <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, you'll see though yeah yeah this one's my favorite probably um, I actually have that photo that you took of me from fucking eight months ago maybe I was in this in from the, the first interview. yeah from yeah, the first yeah. interview bro and yeah. that's it I, this I wear this one religiously actually yeah just a great message you just I don't know it's on that allure tag, but yeah, I really like this shirt. This is the shirt that we wore for you wore for the first interview that we ended up like having to scrap because like the lighting didn't work on it or mm -hmm. something like that. Plus, yeah. uh, I don't know, like a uh, I have like I don't know. We, I feel like we all have like hundreds of tees, but out of the week, we only wear like maybe ten yeah, out of the hundreds. Like, of really them. Get, so get like all that's one of them that I wear like once or twice a week. And it's easy to throw on. Yeah. I mean, black is really easy to wear with anything, so yeah, it really makes sense. I mostly wear white tees, too, though, so I don't usually wear white or black. Yeah. But, like, this is Esprit, actually. I don't know if you know that you know that brand. Yeah, I've heard of them. I've yeah, seen they're some pretty big from yeah. the 90s, but mm -hmm. the power of one act or of a single act, and it's just a, just a can, you know, just yeah. littering with a little back hit on it. Yeah, so, again, it says that message about, like, when it's mm -hmm. recycled and stuff like that. Just more like, more random shit, just like that. This one though, right here, is probably my favorite one of the Earth Tees. Uh, just with it being like, that early 80s Fruit of the Loom tag. Like, that psychedelic, you can't, it doesn't even show that it's an Earth Tee from the front, but flip it to the back, it says fragile, handle with care. Oh, wow. Which is with Earth gone. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I think that was crazy. And the tie-dye on it, let alone, is like a psychedelic tie-dye. Yeah, this is sick. I feel like before, like the first couple that you showed us were like more like simple and like less big graphics, but this mm -hmm. is probably like the first one that has like a huge big hitter kind of graphic and has a lot of color on it. That, that's just one I probably will never, I mean, I'll probably never get rid of all this stuff, but that's definitely the one Earth shirt that I would keep probably forever. And why do you think that is that like some of the stuff like that you have in your stores, like you sell and then you have like these select like t-shirts that you like feel like you can't part his way with um i mean i don't know i love all these that's the, that's the thing but like this kind of stuff the stuff you put in the store you don't really see t you see all the time this stuff you don't really ever see so it's just more like more unique and not all of it's worth much it's just not everyone has yeah, access to it yeah i'd yeah. rather sell i'd rather keep something that's worth twenty dollars and sell it for twenty dollars right you know uh this is one of my other this is probably my second favorite one of the earth tees on the Toltex, but as that, uh, she's just watching TV with the tree on it. Dang, yeah, a lot of these have like really deep messages or like kind of like punch in the face kind of messages. That's like pretty dark. So it's like deforestation basically. Mm, yeah. Yeah, melting, earth melting basically. It looks like the oh. Grateful Dead when you saw it. It does. A lot, <laughs> it looks almost like a Grateful Dead. Yeah, because it's that one Grateful Dead ice cream one that you sold me that it has like the melting ice cream. Oh, it was thrash. Yeah, oh, it's okay, thrash. I remember that. The tie dye, but it, I, like for a second I was like, wait, what the heck is that? Uh, I've had this one for about two and a half, three years. I pulled this one at the racks a long time ago. I mean, yeah, three years ago. But it says uh, it's getting hot in here, and then global warming warming threatens our planet. The more you drive, the hotter it gets. Greenpeace. When did you start thrifting? Oh, uh, shoot. We used to go when I was younger with my family, mm -hmm. but I didn't take it serious. I don't feel like any of us took it serious really until. Right, it's hard to t know what like was taking it seriously. I feel point. like nobody would have known or expected uh, vintage to be what it is right now. Yeah, you know? that's fair. Like, who would have known to start collecting then to like yeah. save up to I start mean, selling now? 
I mean, vintage has been a thing forever, but it hasn't been as mainstream as it is right now. Right, right. Or it used to kind of like be like frowned upon, or like it's like yeah, oh, oh frowned upon heavily. Yeah, you used to get made fun of in school for thrifting, bro. Yeah. So you said you've been like familiar with thrifting, but like taking yeah, it more serious in the last couple of years. Definitely the last two years. Started taking it serious four years ago, but I didn't get too serious until two years ago. And now you own a shop. <laughs> so that's pretty serious, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like anybody can own a shop, though. Yeah. Just put your time to it. Yeah, yeah, but you do a good job about it. But yeah, anyways, back to the back to the t-shirts. Uh, but yeah, these are not earth rated now, so these are all. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like this is a pretty powerful topic right here, just as of right now, but it always has been, mm -hmm. just with everything going on. Um, I feel like it's a standout piece. Yeah. I, don't know, I keep handing them here. <laughs> Conical tag, too. Bro, I was wearing this, and I had some guy be like, some guy asked me, he was like, is that X? I'm like, what? He's like, is that X? I'm like, no, this isn't X. Yeah, it doesn't really look like X, but. <laughs> I was like, I'm confused as to how you thought that was X. <laughs> uh, this one I just got about two months ago. It was actually pulled on me, uh, like right in front of me. And you've but had this one before. I've had this one, but about two years ago, and I sold it, and now I got it back. I haven't seen another one since I sold the last one, and uh, I don't think I'd ever sell it again. That's cool. I was Seriously. Talking, I was talking to Carson earlier, and he was talking about how like sometimes it's weird how things like come into your collection, you might let them go, and then, and then like, you regret oh. it. So and then bad. if you get a second chance to get it, it's like, all right, it's worth going ahead and grabbing it and being like, all right, I'm not gonna let this one go. This Just because big possibility of you not ever getting one again. Right, exactly. So It's a very unique one. So, yeah, there's a lot going on in here. Super loud. Just, I mean, completely, entirely covered it, basically. Right, exactly. All the, the details are crazy. Insane. Yeah, this one's insane. Do you know any like backstory to what this like what where this is from like what was going on during the time? It's not it, but it's basically like Sugar Shack. It's it, is it Sugar Shack? It is or it is it? Cause it, I, it is Sugar Shack. Then I thought that there I don't know. I guess I had it mixed up. Is that Sugar Shack? Yeah. Sorry, I know I'm not supposed to talk to him, bro. But <laughs> you did. Exactly. Most of these other ones, though, are like, I don't know, being from Indy, we get a lot of it. Uh, it's all like all racing related or like car related or uh, motorcycle, motorcycle related. But I know most people wouldn't care about this stuff, but. But it is like just what's going on here. What I like to collect, right. you know? So um, just like 70s Yamaha, nothing like. Nothing, nothing too special about it. But the combination of it being like Yamaha and also being old, and mm -hmm. it's like something that like racing goes around all, around here. And stuff. The fact that it's like as clean as it is after all these years. Yeah, dude, and that's the crazy thing is like you wouldn't really expect that this is how many years old, but it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not whatsoever. Got the '70s Honda racing jersey as a a little Honda line. Yeah, so something like this, like where, where, like how long ago did you start like getting educated about like telling the difference of age or like looking at tags and stuff like that? Like when did you take that step to start like taking thrifting and vintage more seriously? When I was like, when I dropped out of school, I was like, there's something to do with all these, the way stuff is made, mm -hmm. the way shit's made or uh, tags change all the time the so quality yeah quality of quality of the t-shirt or the garment of anything the, you could tell you could definitely tell the garments of today are not anything quality like the older clothes so i don't know i just feel like it's distinctive too yeah so, so how did you do that did you like read uh, like a lot of books like did you talk to people uh, or? research a lot and yeah i talked to a lot of people i mean if it wasn't for all the friends or the entire community alone None of this would even be where it is right now. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people pass knowledge around. And like you look at the stitching on this one, it's crazy. Just a tag. Yeah. yeah I'm there. There's a lot of those jerseys out there, but they don't have the tag to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's crazy that like people like you can like look at a piece of clothing and like quickly by touching it or like looking at the stitching know like around what the age is or what it is. It's definitely like a nerdy thing. But it's like not a bad. But it's a thing. cool. It's yeah, a really it's cool, a, it's thing a cool one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
This one is probably my favorite Indy 500 shirt that I have, but it's not him, but it looks a lot like him. It's uh, Peter Max-esque. He's like a a huge man. I can't even I can't even begin to the, to talk about it. He had some of those vibrant works of art out there from the 50s, 60s, even older than that. Yeah, I mean, all of it was psychedelic, really. So it's like a, it's like a kind of like an intersectional thing. Mm -hmm. like it's like but it's Indy not 500, him. It's old, but it looks like that. It looks like style. it, but it's yeah. not. Yeah, and but it's just the fact that it's seventies, you know, it, that it's the graphics that good on it too. Right, like and it might not even be his like artwork, but it, like if it's like even influenced, it's cool that that like could have influenced mm -hmm. somebody to make this shirt. I definitely think it was influenced by it right. for sure, just because nobody else at the time was doing anything like that. It's crazy too, because I mean, like this is a really old shirt, and like we have the Indy Five Hundred around here, and, like this is the only place that has it, and like you still don't even see these pop up. No, and, never. Like, stuff ever. like this pop up that often. So yeah, it's really cool that you have something like that in your collection. Just wait for the day another one color, one of those comes around in another color. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is just a basic Indy Five Hundred shirt from like the late seventies, early eighties. Not sportswear. Has that little back hit. Yeah, really like that too. Early eighties. My bad. <laughs> And then, uh, this one's just a caricature shirt from the 70s, but it's, most of them you see are cotton. So this one being the, it's not polyester, but it's a 50 rayon and 40 cotton. So I don't know, that, that's that nerdy shit that I'm talking about. Yeah. That nobody would ever. Like getting into the very fine details. Yeah, nobody would ever get into. something you care about and you notice, so yeah. But he who shall, so shall he who. I don't know, that's just a funny saying on it too. <laughs> no, yeah, this is also a really cool color too. Really cool the graphic. fact that it is that color, uh, specifically from the seventies, it's just really crazy. Just because you won't, you don't really see too many colors or even anything made out of this. Yeah, this material is like graphic. You feel it. it doesn't necessarily feel like cotton. It doesn't really feel like polyester. It just feels like a weird blend of. Oh, for sure. Interesting. It's crazy. Uh, just another Indy five hundred shirt, nineteen seventy seven though. Pretty, pretty damn small, but look at the, the stitching's all messed up. I mean, you can just tell. This is wonky, yeah. It is very wonky, <laughs> but that's how a lot of 70s t-shirts were too, though. Especially after being washed and shrunk so many times. Yeah, in the wear and stuff like that. And that's also something really unique. Like, someone might have a shirt like this that mm -hmm. is in better or worse condition or whatever, but it's like every single one of them ends up being unique by the way that they were worn and washed. and Completely, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's more Indy 500. I wear this one. This one just being it's paper thin. I know you probably can't tell over on the camera, but uh, it's like super soft. That heather gray. Oh, that back is so sick with the it winners. It has all all the winners from up until 80... 1911 to 88. Yeah, that's crazy. It was a uh, 1989. So that's crazy. Yeah, it is a really unique race that we have here in Indy. Biggest race and in the world but I feel like these t-shirts are super hard to get not super hard I'd say but like I don't know I feel like this is like I don't know there's not that many racing tees in here we're almost done with them actually right and it's been like a, two years since I started collecting them so and you don't like see cold them too stuff often and something mm -hmm. you see pop all the time like it's very rare like you might see newer Indy 500 stuff and like it's not nearly as cool because it's not nearly as like like no, the graphics aren't nearly as cool and the quality isn't as great and yeah it's not as unique we get a bunch of 90s ones, but the 90s ones are super common. So I just feel like these are a lot of unique ones, a yeah. little more uniqueer. And that's why you add them to the yeah. collection, that makes sense. So uh, another one, Heather Gray, 1986. Nothing on the back though. But And like I said, most of these t-shirts I can't even wear. I right. just <laughs> but you collect them because you yeah, think they're really just cool, you know? Because of that. I mean, yeah, the graphics on some of these are just insane. And the fact that they've held up, you know, uh, mm -hmm. also speaks to, like, you find stuff that you, like, are in good condition and you take care of them or you clean them up to put them back in good condition, yeah. What is this one? This one, it was brand new in the package, but the first time I bought it off, I took it out. But it, you can tell it's never been washed or worn, but it's a 70s racing tee mm -hmm. of, like, dirt bike racing tee. Okay. But the fact that it's in the condition that it's in and the graphic just like the graphic inside of the tie bro yeah all those like smaller details inside of it 
it's in, yeah, that print is crazy. But it's like early, early 70s. Early to mid 70s, I'd say, but. What is this one? This is a cool one. I'll, I've never seen anything like this before for it being Indy 500 related, but it says Indy 1989 and <laughs> field nothing but racing. Speedway Indiana on that like 80 screen search deck. Yeah, but this is like Death Sock too, basically. Almost. I don't know, for the most part. But it's this one's so thin. Super thin. But, well, I mean, not crazy thin, but it's pretty thin, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's pretty thin. I'm always scared that these shirts are going to rip. Yeah. <laughs> Super easy to rip anything on these. Is that ever something like, I know like dry rot happens. Do you know exactly how that happens and like how you can prevent that? Or is that easy? Dry rot, you can't really. You can prevent it, but I, I'm not too sure. I know there's a several people out there that know really good ways, but I don't know. Dry rot's just something that uh, just happens over time. when it w if it's a black tea and the chemical, mm -hmm. if you don't wash out the chemical that's in it, it'll eat it. It'll eat itself away. Basically, it just rips. Yeah. That's what I've been told. This one, I don't have too much information on. I just know that the surrealist ball was something in the '70s and '80s that like very, very, very powerful people went to, mm -hmm. or like very famous people in the world at the time went to. And they would have like, they would dress up really weird. You know, like Hunger Games. You know how they dressed up in that. They yeah, got dressed just up in like random like costume like shit. That, yeah. That's literally what they did. Is they they wore costumes and shit. And there's not much out there on the Surrealist Ball, honestly. Not too much information. But with everything coming out, like about the Pizza Gate and stuff, <laughs> I'll be honest, bro. I yeah. feel like that. I feel like I feel like uh, for sure. I don't know. Like, I could be completely wrong. But I, I feel like the Surrealist Ball could have been... That's just, like, really creepy, like, the eyes and stuff it, like really, that. It reminds me of Lu Illuminati almost. Yeah, like, the, like the, icon, like but, the icons in there are kind of creepy. It's just like, what is this? You know, yeah. like, what's the graphic exactly? And not being able to find a lot of information. About None it at all. A little bit more if creepy. you have any information on it, hit your boy up. <laughs> I'd like to know. Yeah, this is If cool. not, it's all good. And the, like, this, like, you and I noticed this. This is so weird on this. Like, why do you think... I don't know. Can you get that on camera? I don't know, it's like different, it's like lines inside of the shirt. So like it looks all, like a different kind of like material. All the way down. Yeah. It's, it's same exact spacing all the way too. But it's on that like late 90s, or I'm sorry, late 80s Haynes tag, so early 90s Haynes tag. It's a quality shirt, yeah.